Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Johnny and Dolly title sponsor, Able Auctions. All guests today, including Elliot Friedman, standing by. Sponsored by Bassan Motors. Bassan Motors, trying to do Santa's job again this Christmas. They are giving away gifts with all purchases. Learn more at B-A-S-A-N-T Motors.com. Uh, as we bring in, as we uh, do often do on a Monday, uh, Elliot Friedman from Hockey Night in Canada and the 32 Thoughts podcast. How are you, sir? I'm good, guys. How are you doing? Very, very good, well. Really very well. Interesting uh, choice of hoodie there. <laughs> are we going to see any NHL? It's comfortable. Are we going to be seeing any NHL players wearing that type of paraphernalia in, 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 a, uh, in a short time? Yeah, it, no, we aren't, Don. Unfortunately, it's, uh, it's, it's too bad. But, um, you know, the NHL, when they postponed the schedule yesterday, the NHL made it be known that it, it, it was – triggered that material damage to the schedule that they kind of talked about. And I think now just the question is, are they going to announce it together? But I think the announcement's coming soon, unfortunately. Uh, I feel for the players, especially the ones that have never had a chance to go. I know how much it means to them, but it's just not going to be possible to go this year. And I, I think the question now, I think a lot of these players are hoping, Don, is, is there any chance that the Olympics get pushed back a year and maybe they get another opportunity? But I, I don't know the answer to that. What about All Star Weekend in Vegas, Elliot? Too soon, um, at least for me. I'm, I'm dealing with the Olympics right now. I, I haven't looked too much at, at Vegas yet. I assume that's going to be the next thing on the agenda. You know, the the one thing that everybody has to realize here is that the reason there was an All Star game this season was ESPN really wanted it. The Pro Bowl was supposed to take place the next day. They wanted a big NHL NFL crossover. You know, right now I think if there is an All Star game, there won't be a media day. There'll be limited access to the to the players. Um, I, I think that might come down to TV because we know TV rules everything, right? So we'll see uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, I guess that's probably the next thing to deal with. I, I still want my free trip to Vegas, Donnie, but yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get it. <laughs> we all do. We all do. Hey, what's your, yeah. uh, what's your sense of unity across the NHL when it comes to the league's decisions on COVID in particular testing? It's mixed. You know, I've done a lot of research on this in the last four or five days, guys. And, um, you know, I, I've done a lot of research on this in the last four or five days. And, you know, it's it's like, look, if you go out in social media and you, and I don't know why anybody would do this, but read all the arguments on there about, you know, testing and COVID and all that. It's insane, right? Like it's, people are all over the map and, and it's craziness. And and in the NHL, I, I've heard it's it's similar. People have very strong opinions. You know, there's there there are players like Nick Cousins and Jonathan Drouin. Cousins talked about shutting down the schedule. Drouin talked about he was nervous about playing Boston because there were several COVID cases. And I think there are people who feel exactly as those guys do. But I also think there are people who also feel the same as as Connor Hellebuck and Steve Eiserman that um, they don't like the protocols being extended. Uh, they feel they've been vaccinated. They don't think we should be testing uh, asymptomatic cases or asymptomatic players. And, you know, like, you know, every time I mention this, you know, people get mad because they say, you know, you can still spread it. And I get it. I'm just saying that, you know, if you're asking me the question, is there a lot of different opinions? There sure are. There are, you know, I, I had one player on the weekend tell me that, say, if Colorado was playing Dallas, and players are asymptomatic, nobody should be tested. We should only be tested if we're symptomatic or we're going into Canada. Because I think there's a recognition that there's no way the Canadian government's going to allow players crossing the border who are COVID positive, even if they're symptomatic. I, I just don't think that's happening. So I think I think uh, the feelings are all over the map, guys. And the way it plays out in social media is the same way it plays out in the NHL. No difference. Elliot, let's get over to the Canucks. Uh, they had a good day yesterday. No positives anywhere, which was obviously a, a positive. Um, the new GM in Vancouver, what are you hearing? Uh, we've heard Jennifer uh, Bottle's name in some role, not GM. But uh, what are your thoughts on uh, the hunt for a new GM in Vancouver? Well, the number one the number one thing I got on the weekend were texts from people saying, uh, 
hey, is there going to be a seat open on Hockey Night in Canada? So ah. that, I got a lot of that. I got, you know, you know there are vultures out there, guys. Oh, right? yeah, it will yeah, not yeah. surprise you. Yeah. It will not surprise you. You know, well, put it this way. I think Gary Mason's story was true. Uh, I think that the Canucks are considering a hire, whether it's Jennifer or the other names, Regina Hefford and Angela Ruggiero. Uh, I do think there are a number of teams making pushes uh, to hire uh, women in their front office, and they're looking at former players or potentially waiting until after the Olympics, this Olympics, to see if any of the current players retire after then. Um, you know, I uh, look, one thing about Jim Rutherford I've learned is when he decides he wants to do something, he's not – talking about six months down the road he he wants to get it done and so i think you know if it's one of those particular people i think we're going to know pretty soon and uh we'll see where they decide to go but i think the report is true one thing i do think that uh that uh, rutherford has been doing and he's kind of, he's admitted it he's called a lot of teams about people he's interested in he's checked in with people who don't he doesn't need permission for and i i think that he he's seeing who he's going to be allowed to talk to, and who he can get to right now. What about uh, this Patrick Alvin, a former Penguin? Hearing his name a lot, Elliot, in some yes. capacity, ending up in Vancouver. What are your thoughts on him? I do think it's, it's possible. I, I, I do. Th- I think that the key is is it is it definitely a promotion? I, I think that that's kind of one of the yeah. questions that's being asked there. So I do think Patrick Alvin is very much on. Uh, Rutherford's radar. I, I think that the, the most interesting question is going to be is, um, you know, I, I think there's going to be some people who look at it and say, look, like I might get the GM title, but Rutherford's going to be calling a lot of the shots. Do I want that? Mm-hmm. Or do I wait for another opportunity where I have maybe have a bit more say? Um, and I'm not, and, and the, the, the thing I want to make clear about this is that I don't want that to be used in any way as a negative against Rutherford. It's not. But Jim Rutherford, even though he's going to be giving up the GM title, going to be saying president, he's going to be making a lot of the decisions. It, it, the Vancouver Canucks are, very, are going to be his team. And I think, you know, some people have kind of said that, you know, where they are and where they're going, they want an opportunity where they might have a bit more say because they recognize that it's Rutherford's team and they respect them. But uh, it'll be his call. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest questions is there There are definitely going to be people who want the job, but there might be some people who say, look, I, I'd like a bit more maybe power than I would get in Vancouver. Okay, uh, Elliot, picking up on something else Rick was talking about, Jennifer Botterill, you work with her every week. Is she management material? Yeah, she is. There's no question about it. She's She's a lot smarter than the a lot of, than the idiots she that sit around her. There's no well, question that. about that. Uh, I, I think you know Jennifer is she's really smart. The thing the thing I think that her her best skill is is that you know there's there's people in life that you know they're always in a good mood and you're like get lost I'm depressed stop coming around me with these good moods. Mm-hmm. Jennifer's very very positive and and I think in a in a Canadian market especially I think that's very important. There are dark days in the season. Uh, things struggle. She's always got a, a good attitude, and she always thinks very positively. I think that's, I think that's that's very very important. I think that's probably one of her best attributes. But she's smart. Like she is a really smart person. Uh, you can tell it. I, I think she's got a lot to add. Do you understand why Paul Maurice left the Winnipeg Jets? I do. Um, you know, Donnie, I, I do think that he saw potentially that they would have to make a coaching change. Um, there, there's no question that the Jets, you know, Kevin Sheveldayoff basically admitted it, that they were considering it. Um, you know, I, I think that they are going to, they were going to have to do something. And, you know, the other thing I really do think has happened, guys, is if your team hasn't been doing well, it's like, it, it, like I mean, it sucks when you're losing in good times. But look what we're going through right now and mm-hmm. just how tough it is. Um, every, anybody out there who's having a rough time in their job, I think, can empathize with it. I think he was burned out. You know, I, I think he was ready. I think he knew it was time. And, you know, the one thing he did was the Jets have been loyal to him. He jumped on the grenade. He said, look, you guys don't have to do anything. I'm going to take the heat with that. I, 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 now, I think the biggest question is, Donnie, is he done mm-hmm. or does he surface somewhere after the season? Uh, by the way, uh, coaching vacancies, Winnipeg, Florida, other interim people in, in there as well, Philadelphia. Do you see Travis Green getting back into the head coaching game anytime soon? Yes. 
I think that's gonna. I think the question is gonna be, you know, how quickly do these teams want to do something, or um, or how quickly does Travis want to get back in? Um, you know, I I think there are some teams out there that would just they, they just want to wait until the summer to see the pool of candidates. Um, you know, I think there's other teams out there like Vancouver who just say, no, I, I want to do it right now. And they, they did it as fast as they possibly could. Um, I do think Travis Green will be a head coach in the NHL again. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's no later than next season. Elliot, last chance to say this to you. Happy holidays. All the best. Well, happy holidays to you guys. Merry Christmas. And, uh, you know, I, I have, if I have any New Year's resolutions, it's to keep coming on uh, looking like a giant bag of crap. So that's what I, uh, <laughs> yeah, you that's said what it. We did. Yeah, that makes three <laughs> no of us. No problem. Yeah. It makes yeah. three of us. No the, problem at all. The hoodie, the hoodie makes up for it. It's a, a sharp looking uh, item. Thanks, Elliot. All the best. Take care, guys. Be well. You bet. You know, of all the and Elliot Friedman from Hockey Night in Canada, of all the players that are missing out, and I know there's accomplishments there of oh, oh, the yin yang for him, but uh, for all the players missing out on the Olympics, and again, nothing official, folks. Yeah. But Steven Stamkos, who remember breaking oh. uh, his leg before uh, an Last Olympic tournament, there. and then you look at this year, and he's he's projected to be on that uh, roster. He's finally healthy for the first time in a long time. He's top ten in the scoring race right now, uh, uh, Rick, having an outstanding season. And you know, part of the inspiration has to be the you know the fact that he would be considered for oh, Team Canada's roster. For sure. And look, look what looks what uh, look well, what is happening for him. You feel sorry for a lot of guys, but he's one guy uh, in particular. Donnie, what about the Canucks? They could have had ten guys there, five on the American team, three on the Swedes, Halak, Horvat. I mean, they half their club could have been going to the Olympics. A lot of them are normal. younger, though, and they'll yeah. get another chance. No, a guy like Stamkos, this, this yeah. might be his last kick of camp. Yeah. Oh, but Elliot sure. brought up the fact that hey, maybe the Olympics get uh, pushed back another year. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, what happens. All right, uh, a break. Donnie and Dolly, the team. Watch out. Donnie and Dolly, the team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. 